Okay, in this video I'm going to look at completing the square for non-monic quadratics. So look at the video for completing the square for monic ones first if you haven't already. Uh, but non-monic just means that the x squared coefficient isn't 1, and I want to put this in completed square form. Now the completed square form is going to look slightly different for non-monic ones. Um, so you know before we had something like you know uh, x plus 1 squared plus 5, now, the only difference we're going to allow is I'm going to allow a number in front of here. So this still has to be just x plus something squared, but I'm going to be allowed to put a 3 in front of here. And this, in fact, is the completed square form of this. If you multiply out the right-hand side here, we get 3x uh, plus 1 times x plus 1 plus 5. That's 3 times x squared plus 2x plus 1 plus 5. So that gives me 3x squared plus 6x plus 3 plus 5, so, which is 8. Okay, so the question is, how do we? How can we come up with that? Now, the thing to notice is that this number three uh, is the number in front of the uh, x squared here, because whenever you multiply out just a normal, just an x plus something squared, it's just going to be one x squared. So if I want three x squared, that number has to be three. And once we've noticed that, we can sort of proceed uh, as before. Okay. So um, if I didn't already know the answer here, what I would do is say, okay, well. Um, that was three, so I could so I could say, well, it's going to be all going to be three times x squared plus two x plus eight thirds. So I'm just going to pull out this this three, and now you see the problem I'm left with inside is just um, the same as the monic one. So you know I can just you know forget that it's all in brackets and just deal with stuff inside the brackets and say, okay, well this is three times now half the 2 to get 1, so that's x plus 1 squared, uh, and I need to subtract 1 squared and add on 8 thirds. So overall, actually, uh, when I multiply this back out, I get 3x plus 1 squared, and I've got 3 times all of this, so it's minus 3 uh, plus 8. So that's 3 times x plus 1 squared plus 5. Yeah. So uh, you know, by just pulling out that factor of 3, we can work with um, the rest of the, the function. Okay? So, there was a slightly messy point when we had 8 thirds in here, but we multiplied through by the 3 again anyway. Now, sometimes you do get fractions in there that are messy, but, you know, it turns out not to be too bad. So here's another one. It's 5x squared this time, so I'm going to pull that 5 out, and we get x squared plus 6x plus 17 over 5. So completing the square in here, that's 5 times half of 6 is 3, so x plus 3 squared. Subtract the 9, add 17 over 5. Let's multiply out these outside brackets, so I've got 5 lots of x plus 3 squared, minus 45 plus 17, so that's 5 times x plus 3 squared. Um, minus 28, and that's the completed square form. So far I've chosen ones where the numbers come out nicely. Um, I want to show you that you can still do it when, it, when that's not the case. I've got 7x squared here, so I've got 7 times x squared plus 15 over 7 times x plus 5 sevenths. So we complete the square inside here, and I need to halve 15 sevenths, so that's 15 fourteenths, so I'll need to subtract here 15 fourteenths squared and then uh, add on my 5 sevenths. So when we multiply this out we get 7 times x plus 15 over 14 squared. Now we need to do 7 times 15 fourteenths squared plus 5. Uh, so now if you're in a calculator a situation where we're allowed to use a calculator, you can use a calculator. Otherwise, let's think about what 7 times 15 squared over 14 squared is. Well, that's 7 times 15 over 14 times 15 over 14. So we see a 7 cancels with a bit of the 14 here to leave a 2. So I've got 15 squared, which if you don't know it, you might have to work out, but that's 225 divided by 2 over 14. So I've got 225 over 2 times 14, which is 28. And now to add on 5 to that, well, 5 times 28 is 140, so that's 140 over 28. So 
Oh, uh, although actually this one was minus, wasn't it? So it's actually minus 225 plus 140 uh, over, over 28. So that I think gives us minus 85 over 28. Uh, so that goes in here, minus 85 over 28. So that would be a slightly tricky one in a non-calculator setting. Um, but of course if you've got a calculator you can just do the fractions that way. Again we can use completed square form to solve a, a quadratic. Um, so here I could write this as 4 times x squared plus 10x plus 19 over 4 equals 0. So the completed square bit we get x plus 5 squared minus 25 plus 19 over 4 equals 0. So that's 4 x plus 5 squared minus 100 plus 19 equals 0. So this bit here, minus 100 plus 19, uh, gives me minus uh, 81, um, which is a lucky nice square number there. Um, useful in a second. And uh, now, in this form, I can solve the quadratic equation. I could say 4 times x plus 5 squared is 81. So x plus 5 squared is 81 over 4. Taking the square root of each side, we'd have x plus 5 is plus or minus. Now the square root of 81 over 4, that's the square root of 81, which is 9, divided by the square root of 4, which is 2. So x is minus 5, plus or minus uh, 9 over 2. So that is minus 5 plus 4.5, so that's 1 half, or minus 5 minus 4.5, that's minus nine and a half which is minus nineteen over two okay so uh so either um minus it's minus one half or minus nineteen over two and so actually uh this thing does factorize then I can see from from those solutions that this would factorize as uh two x plus one times two x plus nineteen which is quite lucky pick that example at random so no guarantee that it was going to factorize but that's nice uh, so what we can see here is that quadratic um, that completed the square form is nice it's a natural way to get to a solution for a quadratic equa equation now I'm not saying you would do this you would just apply the formula but proving the formula is based on completing the square and this is really fundamental then to how quadratics work in fact you know in a way you may as well just use the formula given you've got it because otherwise you're just repeating this work over and over again the, the, the formula sort of saves us doing this over and over again but solving quadratics in this way can be quite revealing similarly for monic quadratics if I've got something that's in completed square form it also allows us to very quickly see what the minimum or the maximum value here is so here the minimum value uh, this is a positive quadratic still that's got a plus x squared uh, as before we can see well this is always positive, this bit here, uh, so x plus 1 squared is always positive. The smallest it can ever be is 0, and that would be when x is minus 1. Uh, and when that is 0, all that goes away and we're just left with minus 7, so the minimum point here would be at minus 1, minus 7. And just saying that makes me think I should do one with a negative uh, quadratic in it. So here, it's exactly the same, I'm just going to pull out my factor as minus 2, so I'm going to get x squared minus 6x minus 1 half and so I get minus 2 times x minus 3 squared subtract the 9 still plus a half so I get minus 2 x minus 3 squared plus 18 minus 1 so we've got minus 2 x minus 3 squared plus 17 um, now we can see then this is a negative quadratic it's got a minus x squared term in it so it would look like this and this one would have a maximum point um, and, so, and here you see this is always negative so uh, you know it's minus a number squared so it's, it's almost always negative so the, you know, the biggest this could ever be is zero and otherwise it's always negative so, so, that, so to make this as big as possible I would take x equals three so that this bracket is zero uh, and when that's all zero I get 17 so the maximum value for this quadratic would be at 3, 17. Now uh, of course quadratics are meant to be symmetric about their maximum or minimum as well so, I haven't, so it's not quite as I've drawn it here but but the completed square form is really nice it allows us to very quickly see the um, minimum and maxima and it's a great way of looking at quadratics